five steps to taking good uh, video with a mobile phone. They are very similar to the ones you do with an actual video camera. Uh, there's a difference in cameras because the camera has a handle, it's meant to be held in hand, it's much more ergonomically shaped, better quality lenses and stuff like that. But your phone is a thing. So the first thing you do when you're doing mobile video, I find this is how people do it. They hold their phone like this, right? Okay, so if you go on YouTube and you're just bumming around or you're on BuzzFeed or you're on Reddit or whatever, what orientation does the video come to you? Landscape. Portrait or landscape? Landscape usually, right? So that's what you want to do first. If you're using a phone to take video, hold it in landscape mode with both hands. How much did this thing cost? I spent a thousand dollars on the Note 8 here. My third child. Least precious of all three, but the one I play with most, honestly. So yes, hold it in landscape mode with both hands. That's the first step. Landscape. Plus two hands. Oh my gosh. Now, usually when you're recording video, usually when you're recording video, you're able to stand still, most likely. You're probably not running around. Video really sucks when you move. Because the, there's a large discrepancy between how you move and what it sees. Your head has an entire body of uh, shock absorption and motion suppression, and your eyes and your brain all work together to make it look nice and smooth. But on a camera, it's just showing you what you got, right? So what you need to do is find a good spot where you can see all the action. You do not want to zoom with the zoom function, whatever that is. You don't want to use the zoom function on a phone or a video camera because it gives it a higher amount of blurriness, there's more motion, there's more shape to it. And also, because the lens is shaped like a bubble, there's this fisheye lensing effect that happens where the edges of the screen get curled back. Right? If you need to zoom in, you want to move in. And there's a certain way of doing that. If you want to get a panoramic view, you need to move a certain way. Notice I'm not moving my arms. I'm keeping my elbows in. I'm turning with my core. All right? When I move, I move evenly. I'm not locking my knees. Um, actually, I used to take Tai Chi. I am using the Tai Chi walk, if you know how that works. So it's very simple, even paced steps. Toe, heel, heel, toe. So that's our next thing. Elbows in, turn to the core. Oh, this is I really gotta get rid of You have to hold your legs not locked because locking makes you bounce. And you're already all doing this anyway because my exercise science students, you are all wiggles. I have not met an exercise science student who could sit still. They're all like, like fabulous. So you want to bend your knees a little bit if you're staying in one place, kind of horse stance, right? Because you want your knees to be shock absorbers. You want to have your feet at least shoulder width apart. You want a good, strong base. So. Don't lock knees. Oh, sorry, that's right there. Horse stance. Right? Now, that's just doing it if you have your camera like this. There are still two things you can do to get even better video. Even better. 
because nature wants you to make a triangle to get the most strongest position possible. So if you can make a triangle with your body, do so. The easiest way to do that is to a wall or a door. Go get in one. Right now, I'm not kidding. Yes, this is a lesson. For some of you, you're totally shocked. Some of you are like, yeah, I know, this is Xander. Do it. Walls, doors. You need to get up against the wall, right? Make your body into a triangle. You're the tripod. That's why we use tripods. The triangle, three, is the first, most basic, strongest structure you can make. So I'm putting my shoulder into the door jam. I'm putting this foot at the base. I'm putting the other foot on the outset. Now, I have taken me out of the equation. As I record video this way, it is smooth. The wall is bearing the weight. It's not my legs anymore. I'm still kind of turning with my core, right? I'm keeping my elbows in. This makes it much, much more smooth. Now this is useful in a classroom setting or in a building setting. You can do that kind of thing. You can even do it outside of a building. You can use a tree. You can use a you know, telephone pole. Make sure you have something you can lean against. Get all of your weight into that. If you cannot have a tripod for real, make yourself into one. Quick back to your seats. This is the last one, I swear. The five steps to getting into the video. Become one. Become the tripod. Become the thing which you rest in space. Okay, now this one's good for classes. All right, I always suggest once we got video, like nice phones and video and stuff, uh, even I was, I was in still grad school when this kind of stuff came out. Uh, I was starting to take this. Film your classes. I mean, you're paying to be here, right? If your teacher has something important to say and they're up here and they're writing it down, there's no reason why you can't record that shit. Because you didn't like it. You paid to be there. You have the right to. Now you can't broadcast it. That's an intellectual property right issue. Which we might get into later in the semester. The first year part of it. But really, you should be able to record anything. If they have a problem with it, talk to them. Remember, you're paying to be here. We work for you. For you. For you. That's, that's the job of the teacher. It's, it is a sort of a, a bond like a parent and a child, but it's also a person who is paying, a customer, a patron, and the person who's providing. I'm an employee. That's what it says when I go and put my timesheet in, employee service portal. I work for you. Now, let's use that. Let's take that video. You don't want to stand in class and have to do this, right? You don't have to run it all against the wall. No, you're at a desk already. Become a tripod here. Elbows on. Hold it. Both hands. Sternum into the chest or desk, right? This means you're taking your body's natural bounciness, because we are always trying to achieve a balance. We're very strange creatures made out of calcium, metal, and water, and carbon just sacks of carbon full of water. We're very wiggly. So you want to get down there. Do this. Do it right now. Elbows on. One, two. Chest, stern, right into the desk. Three. You're taking your body's wiggle out of the equation. And you're still getting footage. And it's nice and steady and stable. Right? Those are the five steps to getting good video on a mobile phone. Desk it. Okay? There are still two considerations though. And this is true for all video everywhere. There are two big issues. And this is why the motion picture industry takes so long to make a movie. The movie's only two hours long. How come it took them two and a half years to film it? Well, we've got two problems. Sound. 
You are holding the phone. He doesn't hear your face. You're breathing. You don't want to hold your breath. I mean, the last thing you need to do is pass out. That would suck. That, that doesn't work. That's not good video. So you have to be considerate of sound. Where are the sound sources coming from? If you're outside, it's diffuse. It's in every direction. But if you're near the road, that's going to hit. It's going to bounce off of you. It's going to get into that microphone. And that microphone is meant to catch the sounds that are coming from your direction. Even if you got the camera turned around like I just did. It's designed to catch you. The last one is light source. Very specifically, the light source. What direction is the light coming from? In this room, it is coming from the top, but that's why they have these little crystal-like plastic filters on it. It bounces the light around, makes it diffuse. It's sort of coming from everywhere. But if we're outside, especially, you know, right as sunset is coming, you guys are running the class here, the sun is setting, and it's just whoosh, burning your eyeballs out, right? That will screw up any video whatsoever. It doesn't matter what you do. I mean, it's just going to screw it up. You've got to get that sun behind you. If you have a point source of light, especially along the horizon, get it behind you. Otherwise, you want it diffuse. The best days to do video outside are rainy days because there's no one direction the light seems to come from. The clouds diffuse it. So, landscape with two hands. Remember that phone is expensive. Elbows in, turn with your core. Don't lock your knees or stance. Become the tripod. What else? All cells, desk it. What's the sound situation like? You probably actually have headphones that have a little microphone built into them. If you know there's too much sound, plug them in. It'll really, really, really reduce the amount of sound. And just like keep the, you know, the microphone plugged in your pocket. Light source. Where's the light coming from? Is it all around you or is it from one spot? One spot, get your back to it. Okay? That's lesson one. That's project one. Stop recording. <laughs>